the best part about Shannon Rink's Cape Timber is that I didn't get my cape done until October. So welcome to my Cape Tober post. Hello and welcome to Recording by Bianca. I'm Bianca and today we're talking about this sewing so long thing. If you didn't follow along, Sharon Makes hosted a sew along for September that was just the ins and outs of making this cape. It was the Vogue Patterns V9288, very easy cape dress thing. There are a bunch of options and I kind of chose one but then made some adjustments which I'll talk about in a second, but it was fun. It was really great and honestly without Shannon Makes like I wouldn't have done this because all the detail work that she put into all the explainers and all the so long videos was hella helpful. So I'm gonna walk you through my process in a second. But while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share because it's fun spoopy season and I'm doing lots of fun autumn, fall, Halloween projects that you don't wanna miss, right? You don't wanna miss long, you don't. So here are some of the adjustments that I made to the cape pattern from Vogue. Initially, this is supposed to go on the outside with the buttons being transposed. So this side would be buttonholes and it would the bib would be on top and the buttons would be under or buttons would be over. I'm confusing myself. Yes, just basically swap so the bib is on top and the bib has buttonholes. But I decided that because I am living my panini life and my body has changed and fluctuated, I prefer to just make it so that the bib had the buttons so I could just adjust the buttons spacing as needed if my body fluctuates again. So to break that down, I have the buttons on the bib part and the button holes are on the outside part and this bib goes under and I believe on the pattern it goes over. Yes, confirming looking at the pattern, the bib part goes on top. I didn't do that. I swapped it for a couple reasons. First being, I just thought that it would be easier to adjust if I did that. Second being, once I kind of cut the collar part out and everything, um, for a petite person, it just like didn't quite fit. This whole area kind of like needed a little bit of adjustment for me because I'm petite and that's fine. But yeah, I thought that that would be an easier adjustment later on. Also, I did choose the shortest pattern, but as you'll see, because I'm a short person, it is a little bit longer on me, which is actually great and fine because I want it to be a little bit longer and more of a dress. And this is a temporary belt. I will be sewing and making a actual permanent belt that I will fix the back um, inside a little bit more permanently soon. And as we all know, work is never really finished for sewists. So I still need to finish the inside seams. I wanna hand um, finish these with, uh, I think, tool tape maybe. And um, add the little belt loop in the back, back inside here to keep that belt in place, make a matching belt. And I think that's like the most of it for right now. I might, if I have enough fabric left over, make a little hood that maybe I button on in a few places and it just kind of buttons on and off. But yeah, otherwise it's a really cool project and it looks really nice and it's very warm. Here are the materials that I use to put this together. Pattern, or you know, not just this pattern, any pattern. If you look at Shannon Makes Resources, all the info can really apply to other patterns, not just that one. So check that so long out for all that info and I'll definitely link it in the description. Look at your pattern and check the back for the amount of yardage you will need of your fabrics. Also for this one, I believe it had an unlined option, but I decided to line mine because I had lining and I liked the look of it better. Once you figure out yardage, again, you'll need your outside fabric and your lining if you choose to line it. I got this beautiful wine colored wool from Joanne Fabric. I know, I know, it's not everyone's favorite, but I was there and it was there and I said yes. I got this lining though from my local favorite fabric store, Fabrics in San Francisco. And uh, I really like the pinstripe. It's, just, it's really nice. I like almost want to make this reversible just in case I ever have this on during rain because I feel like this would kind of be good but also not 100% waterproof. You'll need interfacing um, and twill tape potentially depending on what you're doing. Um, obviously a sewing machine of some kind or if you want to hand sew it I guess you could. 
more power to you and buttons uh definitely some buttons i just got these really cool little wooden buttons off amazon yeah i got it off amazon i don't have a job right now it was cheap speaking of jobs reminder that you can support me monetarily on coffee where you can leave me tips or patreon if you'd like to support me monthly and see previews of great content like this or other cool behind the scenes stuff also every patron no matter your tier gets access to a special discord server so like if facebook goes down you still get to talk to me and other people in my patreon group now that we've gotten this shameless promotion out of the way let's see how i put this together okay so the first thing you're gonna do is get your pattern pieces cut out that's important for trace whatever you do get your pins out get some scissors and um turn that iron on because it's time to make this thing are you ready to make this thing let's make this thing it's really pretty i know that not everyone likes joanne but like look at it look at it it's like wine colored it's so warm and cozy okay so at first i i did try to follow the directions really closely and then i was like nah but i did do the whole kind of building out the interfacing collar attached to the front bib portion first because i felt like that was probably crucial for fitting and it was reminder that if you're using interfacing you know you're gonna want to make sure that you a have everything lined up nice um think about if you need to do any um pad stitching remember to cut off excess stuff um i clip the corners because it suggested clipping the corners off the interfacing for this which is fine because i think the interfacing i had was very very stiff um but yeah that collar piece is for the front center bib as i will call it okay so the way the pattern works is it wants you to focus on getting those interfacing pieces done first which is fine and totally makes sense i do deviate from some other directions later on which you'll see but you're basically going to make sure that you get those interfaced pieces complete first um, and basically it's going to be the collar, so all around the neckline, and then the front pieces that kind of intersect with that. So the sides of that bib front, as I'm going to call it, the little like dress thing that goes along your chest, and then the two edges of the cape that wraps around you, the, those two edges that um, touch, overlap, or underlap with the cape bib depending on how you've put it together um reminder that i did invert my bib so that it was under the whole time for my cape and um yeah you totally are seeing that like the interfacing is cut fine and evenly it is that interlining that i did cut a little big and that's because it was very very slippery and um i knew that i could trim it if it didn't line up properly um versus adding to it so I basically because I only had so much wool I was very conservative about making sure I cut that wool properly uh, but the inter lining that pin stripe I, I I was a little bit gratuitous with how I cut it just because I knew even after it was like hanging up too I wanted to make sure that like the the bottom hem would be okay so now you're seeing I'm just cutting off that excess I was just talking about um just because it's fine just shaking it off um but that was my choice i just thought that that would be an easy way to ensure in case there was a slight mess up that i wouldn't have to recut these large pieces because they are very large pieces um for a cape there aren't a lot of pieces to this pattern which is really really good but the cape pieces are fairly big so you want to just make sure those are perfect um and yeah, the, the, the lining was just very slippery. I didn't want to take chances. So now I have turned it inside out and I'm pinning it down, pinning it in place. 
I will be top stitching the outside edge and then the way that I go about this is then after I finish those front pieces I just kind of I sew on the regular I don't know what words are I sew a regular seam for the sides so it's not inside out for the sides so that means that I will need to like hand finish those sides at some point which I plan to do, I think I mentioned earlier. Like, I'm just gonna, with twill tape, finish those seams on the inside. But that was a me choice because I wanted to line it, but I also am not great at, like, lining things yet. So this was my choice. I just kind of kept them together and kept them kind of like as one piece of fabric and worked with it that way. And, um... You'll see that sometimes I have to rethread my machine because that's life. So much rethreading. My tip for doing large projects like this, like skirts and capes, like things that you know it's going to take more than one bobbin, is to just pre-do that work. So I pre-wind a bunch of bobbins before a big project like this in the correct threads. And that's just... It just makes it easier, like, it just makes it a little bit nicer so that you don't have to stress about, oh, I don't have to stop everything and take the, like, for me, I need to, like, take everything out and like, rethread it and all that stuff, but it's nice to just be like, okay, I don't have to stop everything to rewind a bobbin, I can just do this. So I have, like, a little case of bobbins, too, that has, you know... The threads from projects past which is great look at me i think i'm right now sewing without any without a bobbin is that it no i don't know it's just a random spare thread so sometimes you'll see like a random long thread and you'll be like oh did i just sew for two days without a bobbin great so here is me looking all cute and sweaty from sewing um i'm just in various stages over the night from attaching the collar seeing how it fits um, and it's much easier to pin this on a dress form than on yourself, shockingly. But it looks great so far. Like, once you get those main pieces together, it's, it's like pretty done. Except for the details, which is fantastic. Um, I'm very in love with the lining. I'm so in love with that lining. I think it was such a good choice. And like, I didn't get the lining specifically for this project. So I hand roll these hems. Yeah, I did. I just I I just decided to hand sew it. I let this sit all, also overnight. Reminder for folks who aren't used to dealing with hems for something like this, you need to let it just sit overnight. So that was part of the reason I put it on the dress form. It was so that the fabric could settle. And then I started rolling it and hemming it. And now I've marked my placement for my buttonholes. Um, again, I've inverted it so the buttonholes are on the outside. It was a choice. I'm okay with it. And now, you will see that I am finishing the inside of that collar. I didn't finish it the way that the instructions told me to. And that's fine. I'm a rebel that way. I don't follow directions. <laughs> it causes me problems later on. It's fine. Um, I just prefer to do this than, like, the way they were talking about doing it. I don't know. Um, I think it's fine. It works for me. I'm happy with it. So, yeah, I'm basically just putting full tape over that raw edge so that it doesn't touch my gentle neck. And now I am doing buttonholes. Um, you know, the first buttonhole is always the worst one, right? That's a, that's a known fact that, like... The first one that you do in a garment is just not going to be amazing. Now, also, I will note that I do have a sewing machine that theoretically can do buttonholes. But I haven't used it for that yet. And, you know, I didn't want to start now. That just seemed like a bad time to experiment with settings on the machine that I had yet to use. So then I took this down the stairs to watch Halloween movies. But you can see that I've now marked where the buttons should go. So I just popped the garment back together. I had 
finished making all the buttonholes and I put this on and then I just put the chalk through the buttonholes so it lined up exactly. What do we have here? Hmm. Hmm. This may not be a scrap project, but I like it. Was that fun? Did you enjoy watching me make this cape and continuously <laughs> self-sabotage along the way? Cool. That's kind of sewing for me. I'm a little chaotic. Yes, I know I'm going to fashion school, going to fashion classes to try to get better and also share the things that I'm learning, but also maybe this is a lesson in even as you're learning, sometimes along the way you're going to fuck up and sometimes it's fine, you'll adjust. I so love this cape already again i already mentioned that i want to put maybe a little hood in here that i can button in um but a large part of me really wants to make the rest of this cape part here this bib part a full dress maybe even a full halter dress i don't know but i am really thinking about how i could make that a full dress or even make another project that's a cape dress that has the button off button on cape thing. Anyway, it was really fun, really cool, and um, thank you Shannon Makes for hosting. Don't forget to go follow her and like all the amazing sew along stuff, and um, even if you missed the cape timber, which I mean like technically I did because this is a Cape Tober post. You can check out all of the resources, again I will link them in the description, and you can try making your own cape because I mean We've still got many cold months ahead. And a cape is always fashionable despite what Edna says. Thank you for joining me today. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Special shout out to my patrons who like have supported me and been there for me, especially right now as I'm like between jobs, but also trying to like put out my creative work and like rebuild my brand after it was taken away from me. Thanks for stopping by and don't forget to make it so.